and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is John Amabile, author of the book Changing the Worlds, The For-Profit Plan to Mine Asteroids and Terraform Two Planets in One Human Lifetime. Tonight's video will be about the benefits of nuclear thermal rockets compared to chemical rockets. The energy held in uranium is three million times the energy held in the same amount of rocket fuel. I want that to sink in for a moment. Two objects of exactly the same mass, and one of them can perform three million times the work as the other. Not bad, huh? America also has a huge nuclear waste problem. We have more than 68,000 tons of it, which we plan to spend $100 billion to bury on our own homeworld. This material is not useful for our nuclear reactors, which require uranium at 100% energy capacity. Nuclear waste is uranium that is run down to 95% energy and won't work in the reactor the same way. So having 95% of its energy means that it is 2.85 million times better than a chemical rocket. Finally, when the fuel cells on the nuclear thermal rockets burn out, which could take centuries, they can be transferred to a propellant station in orbit around a distant asteroid. In this way, the last neutron will react out, and we can slowly be generating propellant using that energy very far from the Earth. The nuclear thermal rocket still does, does require hydrogen propellant, only half as much as the chemical rocket needs fuel, but still a concern. So where in the solar system can we find nuclear thermal rocket propellant? It is basically the most common element in the solar system, hydrogen. I've done a separate video on transastros technology that can extract water from virtually every asteroid in the solar system. How difficult is it to extract? Even solid rock asteroids have tiny amounts of water. We can melt out the water, then use electrolysis to split the hydrogen and the oxygen. Each time a ship mines an asteroid, they will start by melting out water and restoring their depleted propellant stock. To be fair, I must point out that many NASA rockets also use liquid oxygen and hydrogen as fuel. This is what TransAstro is working on right now. So what is the difference between extracting hydrogen and oxygen for NASA versus only using the hydrogen and using nuclear thermal rockets? Well, the hydrogen and the oxygen have to be combined just under the right conditions in order to combust. The oxygen is also 10 times more massive than the hydrogen, which, which creates significant mass problems. Using oxygen and hydrogen requires two sets of pumps, two sets of pipes, and a large number of ways in which those systems interact. This also involves mechanical wear, which means maintenance. How many maintenance depots do you think we have on the wrong side of Mars right now? And all of this effort and complexity so that we can go half the speed. A nuclear thermal rocket is just uranium with perforations in it. We can heat up or cool down the uranium by rotating neutron moderators toward or away from the uranium, about as complex as a foosball table. Then we run hydrogen through the perforations so the heat transfer can accelerate the hydrogen. A nozzle in the back of the rocket serves to channel the exhaust in the direction we want. By this simple method, we get twice the speed of a chemical rocket and three million times the energy capacity. We can assume the ballista all have a transastro propellant system, which I am calling Celestial Propellant Package 3, or CPP3. As long as we have a hydrogen source in high Earth orbit, we can propel our NTRs out from Earth. Once they arrive at 433 Eros or 16 Psyche, they can mine ore and remove the hydrogen to be stored as propellant for the flight back home. Since space travel involves traversing huge distances over years, an NTR might go on a multi-year mission to 15 different asteroids taking on additional hydrogen each step with no additional fuel or maintenance. The speed increase also cannot be overstated. When we travel from London to New York, we don't have to worry about New York flying away from us at 14 kilometers a second. Objects in space are perpetually moving. A 2x increase of speed does not mean that you can reach asteroids A, B, and C in half the time. That may mean that you can reach these asteroids at their closest approach a month from now, instead of flying six months of food, fuel, and water to meet them where they will be in six months. If there's a delay in the launch, you have to wait another few years until the window opens again. With an NTR, your launch window is twice as big because your velocity is doubled. The cost of the trip is half because the crew will spend less time in space. The health risks to the crew go down by a factor of 10, and the confidence of your, of your investors may go up by 100. There is also gravitational drag from the sun, which equals a loss of money for the ship to compensate. A three-month flight out could result in a significant amount of drag from the sun, where a 1.5-month flight out would be much less. The further back we go in the solar system, the greater this drag factor. A 
a 2x increase in speed could really be 4 or 10x increase in speed, depending on how far away we are going and what the effects of the solar drag are. The other wonderful thing about NTR propulsion is that we've barely scratched the surface with this technology. When I write nuclear thermal rocket, really what I mean is the solid core nuclear thermal rocket, flight tested, even crash tested by NASA in 1971. The liquid core design is more like uranium soup, with hydrogen being pumped through it. The gas core is more like a uranium sauna and goes twice the speed as the solid core, or four times the speed of a chemical rocket. For a multi-year mission, that 50 to 100 percent increase in speed could be a huge difference in price. There are some asteroids on very complex or orbits that can only be reached at high speeds from Earth. The gas core is even more complex, but this engine design would go roughly two times the speed of the solid core, making it four times the speed of chemical rockets. So comparing all these systems, we see that chemical rockets have a specific impulse of 452 meters per second in a vacuum. A solid core NTR goes from 850 to 1000 meters per second. A liquid core goes 1300 to 1500 meters per second. And a gas core goes 1500 to 2000 meters per second. In my plan, we start with solid core nuclear thermal rockets to make our first few billion dollars. Once we get the first infusion of cash, we can accelerate our research and development to build the liquid core and the gas core designs. The platinum on Eros can get everything started and is very reachable with the solid core NTR. 16 Psyche, 21 Lutetia, Ceres, and Chiron, anything at the main belt or further would be a six month plus flight for the, for the closest part of the belt. With solid core, it would be four and a half months, with gas core, three months. Since there would be thousands of flights, a few billion dollar investment would be very reasonable. Imagine how slow it would have been for America to grow without steam-powered railroads, or for Australia to develop without steam-powered ships coming from Britain. Without nuclear thermal rockets, Solar System 1, even Galaxy 1, would just be an expensive photo opportunity. Thank you, and good night.